Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host, PhilPhoneKitchen.com, and this, what you see over here, is the Galaxy S10e. The Galaxy S10, the latest flagship from Samsung, comes in four different variants. Galaxy S10e being the cheapest, uh, hence the name E, standing for essential uh, means, and the S10, the vanilla S10, S10 Plus, and the S10 5G, which is not gonna be released in every single region, but that has one extra camera on back and front, respectively, and bigger battery, bigger screen, and faster charging speed. But anyway, this is the cheapest and the smallest of them all, the Galaxy S10e. Now, this is the new packaging that Samsung has been bragging about, and this is made entirely without the plastic use. And, well, there are some plastics here and there, like the, the pulling tab over here, but other than that, this is mostly paper, uh, recyclable paper. And inside the packaging is a little packet that contains the usual goodies, including the user guide, user guide, the quick, um, the data transfer guide, and the another smart switch guide, along with a case. Samsung has been including the case for quite a while now um, with the cheaper devices and more expensive devices and they've been the transparent jello plastic case and this one is a bit different. It's a bit rubberish and with the, the softer coatings on top with the rubber coating on top and looks very say distinct. It's got holes on it. I don't know how to call it. Apple had the iPhone 5C case sold separately um, that had the holes on it, but this is like whole another level. We're gonna put it on later. Anyway, um, beneath that is the phone itself. This is the Galaxy S10e. Comes in four or three different colors depending on the regions. Um, it's prism white, prism black, prism green, and then there's the canner yellow. Canner yellow, I was thinking about getting that one, but I, in real life, it didn't really look that appealing. This is a coral one, but the iPhone XR's yellow was really fascinating, I love that one, but the S10's canner yellow wasn't really up to that level. Right next to it is the charger, fast charging charger, that gets output in nine volts, 1.67A or five volts, 2A, and the USB adapter that converts the USB type A to type C. So you can use it for the accessories if you want to, like keyboard mice, or you can use it to transfer your data uh, from the older phone to the newer one. Over that is the cable. See, I really love this packaging. This new paper packaging is not only recyclable, eco-friendly, which I'm not really you know, that interested in, <laughs> to be completely honest, but this looks neat. I can't believe that this is made out of paper and they pulled this much of a great design. You can just pull it open, this pull tab open, and here is very neatly packed USB-C cable. Isn't that nice? And this is not even the nicest part of it. This is the headphones. This is AKG tuned sound, AKG, whatever they want to call it, the pair of headphones. You can see that you can just pull that tab open and look at the way it opens. Just like Apple did with their ear pods, they have a pair sticking outside looking like they don't have a cable, like a little bit cunning. And then the rest is presented to you in the very neat manner. The cord is tied there and look at that. There is even, there are even pairs of the extra tips hidden beneath there. Very nice. And that's all there is. The rest is just a piece of paper, presumably. And to the phone itself, what got me surprising is how small the phone is. It's 5.8 inches of full HD plus panel. On the right hand side is a power button with the fingerprint sensor built in, just like the older Sony devices or the some of the Motorola devices and Nextbit and Razer, of course. And when I first saw the leaked photos, I wasn't really sure about the position up tight, but holding it on my hand, this phone is even smaller than I thought. So your thumb naturally stays right there. On the left hand side is a volume rocker with the big speed button that you can customize finally, thank you. And on top is a SIM card tray along with a secondary microphone. And on the bottom is a USB-C port. And surprisingly enough, it still retains the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Speaker is there, microphone, and this is not the only speaker. There's one on top working as a call speaker and they work simultaneously to give you the stereo sound effect. On the back are the dual cameras, not the triple or quadruple like the Galaxy S10 5G, but this is the main lens with f1.5 or f2.4 adjustable automatically depending on the lighting condition. And right next to it is f2.2, 123 degrees of wide angle camera. So it's lacking the 2x zoom telephoto lens. There's the LED flash, usual sensor, Samsung logo, and the back is actually a lot prettier than I thought. Samsung isn't really good with their black 
uh, finishes. Like iPhone X, XS had this really nice looking finishes with a little hint of depth of glass right there. But just like the iPhone 8 or the XR, the Samsung devices were just solid, boring, dull, dark black. But this one is indeed prism me. But if you want to, you can block it with the <laughs> given case. Uh, I'm not sure if this case is given out everywhere. Um, it was included in the South Korean version of the packaging that I got. But as always, if Samsung did what Samsung does the best, giving different regions different things, then you might not be able to get one. Anyway, it looks like this. I don't know where this idea came through, but I'm not a fan. And I don't reckon there would be a heck of a lot of people who are. Anyway, what you see on the front side is 5.8 inches of full HD plus panel, AMOLED, a very nice one with the HDR10 support and up to 800 nits of brightness. And this is Infinity O panel. So what you get is a front facing camera stuck right inside of the panel. And if you happen to hate it so much, you can hide it. It's gonna just paint the rest of the parts black. It acts like it never existed. And for the sake of being busyless, there is a navigation bar option. You can use the classic navigation bar buttons or the full screen gesture. So you can just swipe, swipe on those screen corner bottom edges to simulate the navigation buttons. Before we get any deeper, let me tell you the basics. It's got Exynos 9820 for most of the regions and Snapdragon 855 for North America and Greater China region. Comes with either 6 GB of RAM with 120 GB of storage or 8 GB of RAM with 256 GB of storage, both expandable through the micro SD card slot. And of course it has Samsung's One UI. I like this one. This is a lot prettier and say fancier than the previous versions. Some people don't like the icons. I don't necessarily have problems with it. If you're wondering, it is based on Android 9 Pi. So with that raw power, Samsung also included some of the interesting features. One of them is called the wireless power share. This was first introduced with Huawei and Samsung included this on the Galaxy S10 series. So you enable that and the phone works as a wireless charging pad. So you put something wireless chargeable like the Galaxy Buzz on top and it's gonna start charging it wirelessly. Of course, it works with the Samsung's own smartwatch like the Gear S3 Frontier right here. Uh, or the Galaxy Watch, the latest one, Galaxy Watch Active. And anything virtually wireless chargeable like the iPhone XR right here, it starts charging wirelessly. So in emergency, you can use your phone as a wireless charger. Just make sure that you have a case and a screen protector. Other interesting features are mostly software based. There is night mode, blue light filter, touch sensitivity, and in advanced features, there's a smart pop-up view, uh, Bixby routines, that's just like Google Assistant routines. When the time comes, turn on the always on display, change the lock screen shortcuts, yada, 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 that you want your phones to do automatically in certain situations. So that's Bixby routines. There's smart capture and just like the iPhone, there's reduced animation. So you can reduce the animation of those multitasking screens and pop-ups and whatnot. And there's motions and gestures. There's a load of them. Lift to wake, double tap to wake up, smart stay, smart alert. And there's like a one tap always on display. So it's usually off. Just tap it once and always on display is gonna turn on. If you want it in the old school way, like always on, you can definitely do that too. And then there's a fingerprint sensor gestures. So you can swipe on the fingerprint sensor to slide down the notification bar. There are a number of new features in camera department as well. This is the normal angle and this is wide. And of course there is the intelligent screen optimizer thingy that automatically recognizes the scene and gets the best results. If you go to settings, there is the scene optimizer, shot suggestions like the angle, the optimum angle, the flaw detection when someone blinks their eyes or looks blurry or anything that could have messed your photo, the motion photo, and the front camera now takes 4K video. So you can choose UHD 4K video on a front facing camera that also supports autofocus. Now, I forgot to mention this earlier, but this is one of the very few uh, non-edge display equipped Samsung flagship device. We have to call it a flagship. It's got flagship chipset and all most of the neat features. So if you're okay with the size, the size which is a bit smaller than the vanilla S10, and a lot smaller than the Galaxy S10 Plus. This seems like a very nice option on top of being affordable, relatively affordable, starting from 749 US dollars. So that's the Galaxy S10e, looks very nice. I love the finishes, I love how small it is. Uh, we'll be back with the review very soon. In the meantime, if you have any question, please do leave them down in the comments. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.